about that word rounding? I know some of you have heard it before, maybe seen it before. It was on our pre-test, not saying that you know what it was, but what do we, what do we know about rounding? Joey, what do you know? Okay, so it's got to do with finding numbers that are close. Definitely. Kayla, what do you already know about rounding? language that we might see when we're rounding, so that's rounding to the nearest tens, that's definitely something we would see, and we'd have to know where is the tens place. Conveniently, we all know where the tens place is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Parker, what do you know about rounding? Like, um, if you're on a number, you have to round to the, to the closest ten. Like, if you have, for example, eight, mm -hmm. and you can, like, you count those tens. Okay, so again, talking about those close numbers. Um, why would I use rounding? Why do I need to know how to round numbers? Why do I need to know that? I hear, why do I need to know that? Um, because it's maybe an easy step or it might be on a test. Yes, but think in the real world. Yes, rounding, you <laughs> have a test on rounding. But your whole life is not going to be tests. Why do you need to know the skill of rounding to be a better person in the world? Why would you need to know how to round? Georgina? Sometimes if you're in the store, you have to round something that's like, I have to round the nearest $10 that I have a, because a girl bought this and this and this, and I don't know if I have enough, enough money to buy a new shop like this. Sure, so I have a good story about that when we get there, but you're exactly right, kind of keeping a, a running total in our head is easier to round or to add nice, friendly, easy peasy numbers in our head, even if the store price is $9.95, we can say, mm, that's pretty close to $10, then I can add that in my head. Yeah, it's a good example, and I have a similar story for you. Grace, why would I need to know rounding? Why? Uh -huh. Sometimes, 
if your mom gives you $10 and says go buy and you go buy a snack, she probably cares exactly how much you spent. But sometimes we don't. The one reason for when we're rounding is when we don't really care what the exact number is. We can just be close. Another reason, which is what Georgiana and Grace were kind of telling us, were when we need something friendly, a benchmark number. Hey, we've heard benchmark numbers before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we need those benchmark easy peasy numbers in our head to work with. Maybe we need to add or subtract. Or when you get really good, multiply. So these are two reasons why you need to use why you need to know about rounding. Now also notice that next to round I put this word. What is that word? Ella, what's that word? What is it? It's like close to. For third grade math, rounding and estimate, estimating are synonyms. They're, they're a little different when you get up into higher grades, but for third grade math, they pretty much mean the same thing. Okay? So I want you to be familiar. You're not only going to see round, but you're going to see this word estimate. It means the same thing for third grade math. Either we would use that to when we don't care about what an exact number is, we just care about getting close, or we might use rounding estimating when we're trying to make some friendly numbers to work with in our head. Yes? I have a connection to second grade. Yep. We were uh, measuring, we were using estimates to guess how to do something was before we really mess measured it. Yeah. I think a real way. Yeah, so. Estimating and rounding is, is a good skill to have. I'm moving on. So I told you guys that I was going to have a story. This is a real story, a real true story. So yesterday, I went to the grocery store. I went to Harris Peter because they love Harris Peter because they have cookies. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm so not against taking a free cookie. I'm sure they're for children, but yeah, it could be a kid. Like most of your moms and dads, I have a grocery budget. You know what a budget is? Someone explain what a budget is. Most of your parents have a budget, whether or not they share it with you. Lucy, what's a budget? A budget is like something like um, it's money, and a budget is like you want to buy bread, and it was like $3. Uh -huh. That's the budget for the bread. Yeah, it's like um, a set amount of how much money you can spend. So I might say, okay, I got $50 to spend at the grocery store. I got to buy everything I need and stay under my budget amount, my $50. So just like your parents, I have a budget that I go to the grocery store and I try not to spend uh, more than that. So I go to the deli and I'm picking up sliced deli chicken because I like chicken sandwiches. So I'm getting sliced deli chicken and it's $6.50 a pound. So I get a pound of my chicken. I'm going up to the cash register. I've gotten all my other stuff, bread, coffee, pineapples, pineapple, pizza. Yeah. I got everything else that I need, and every time she beeps, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. $5. Beep. $3. So $8. Beep. Plus $2. Beep. $10. Beep. I'm adding it up in my head. So I have an idea of what my total is going to be, so I make sure that I'm staying in my budget. And it comes up, and I look at the, the cost, and I go, holy moly, that is $50 more than I thought I was going to pay. And so I'm looking at my receipt, and I was like, well, maybe I just added wrong. Maybe it was my fault, and I just was not adding correctly in my head. But I look at my receipt, and I notice that the cashier, instead of charging $6.50, for my chicken, she charged me $65 Whoa. 
There you go. So I wasn't wrong. I can add. Fun fact, technology is only so good if you know how to use it. Am I right? <laughs> so she ended up fixing it and it was all good and my budget was back to normal. It wasn't $50 more, it was back to where it should have been. So what happened to my grocery store experience? I had a budget of $60-ish. And then I was buying chicken that was $6.50, but she accidentally rang it up for $65. What happened there? How did that happen? How did someone make that mistake of $6.50 to $65? How did that happen? Courtney, how did that happen? And then she didn't think about it. Uh -huh. So, she, I think she just think about five because she was supposed to put it after that dot. Oh, what do you mean? So, you only have six dollars. Uh-huh. You didn't the five after that dot. Yep. That, I think she, I think she meant to put that five after that dot. Like, okay, where that dot is, uh -huh. she was meant to put it behind it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's true. Instead of putting the six dollars that dot to show that I'm about to do change in fifty cents, she put six five and then the dot, meaning sixty five dollars and then change. Yeah, that was that was almost bad. Um how did that impact my budget? How did that mistake in my grocery store example, how did that affect my budget? Remember, I had that thought of, holy moly, <laughs> what happened? Eva, what happened? It got out of your budget. It got way out of my budget. Is $6.50 a little bit different than $65? Yeah. Like a lot of it different. That really affected my budget. Yeah. Holy moly, that's like $50 more. Grace? Yes, that is correct. You're so correct. Let's hope I don't get become homeless, but yes. Um so how was it important for me to use my estimation skills to solve my problem? Because remember as she was scanning, bread came up three dollars and 95 cents okay that's close to four i'm going to add that to my milk which is close to two how did using that skill of estimating and rounding how did that help me catch this problem that could have been really bad zoe how did that help me okay parker how did it help me how did using rounding, because I was using rounding in my head as she was scanning my items, how did that help me catch the problem? You rounded the, the $65. Did it really cost $65? No, but you rounded it because she paid me to round it up with all the other stuff. Uh -huh. And I had a whole lot of money to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Taijin, what do you think? How did my rounding skills help me solve my problem? Because it, because it helps you because if you didn't, then she would have written your work content and you would have went over um, your budget by 75 dollars. Yeah, by a whole lot. If I didn't have the skills to round and add in my head, I would have just paid $50 more than I would have had to. And can I tell you, I have no money trees at my house. None of them. I do. So that would have really been bad for me. But because I knew how to estimate and then add those easy numbers in my head, I said, whoa, 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 friend. I don't owe you that much money. 
And I went back and looked, and guess what? Who was right? Me or the machine? You. Me. Technology is only so good if you know how to use it. So, now that we have seen my real life struggle, are we ready to learn this important skill? Yes. 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 Oh, actually, I didn't have to finish. Not right this minute. Save it. So, this is the definition of rounding. Please write it in your notebook. Rounding or estimating. Remember, we've been talking, those words are interchangeable. Hello, over here. Rounding is looking at the distance of a number to the rounding place value and deciding which number is the closest distance away. It's a pretty long definition, but we'll break it down in a second. So that sounds like a lot. I know you're still writing, that's okay. But you've already been doing this at my table. You just didn't know you were doing it. Some of you maybe figure it out. So I gave you some kind of number line. I think I gave almost everybody a number line between 30 and 40. Mm -hmm. Somebody remind me, once you've been to my table, what are these lines right here called? Mm -hmm. Ah, raise your hand, Tazier. Right what are those called? Sam, what are those called? Mm -hmm. End point. When I'm talking about rounding place values, I'm talking about what are your end points. You don't have to write this part down because you've already done it with me at my table in rotation. But you do need the definition down. And then maybe I gave you a number like 32. And you had to figure out where that's going to go on my number line. Okay. 32 is going to be pretty, I'll probably even scoot over closer than that. Pretty close to 30. Thumbs up if you remember doing this. Yeah, we did this at my table. Then we did number jumps, right? To our end point, 32, number jump back to 30. 32, number jump all the way to 40. And this is where that last part comes in. We have to decide which end point is the closer distance. From 30 to 32, that's only a distance of two spaces. But from 32 to 40, that's a distance of eight spaces. So which end point is closer? If I'm standing at 32, am I closer to 30? Or am I closer to 40? Dylan, what you think? 30. 30. I'm only a distance of two. Closer to 30. That's what that definition means. McKenna, do you have a question? Um, no. Okay. Georgiana, did you have a question? No. Okay. I'm just going to answer one of those. Oh, you were just trying to jump in? So you've been rounding already. Cool. Yeah. Everything that we've done at my table so far is rounding. This is rounding. I just didn't call it rounding. It's all about figuring out which end is closer. Which end point is closer? Yes. So we've been doing rounding? Yeah. I thought you were saying second race. Well, I'm rounding. Cool. Second no. Second oh. All right. So let's look at a hundred chart. Raise your hand if you've seen a hundred chart before. Yeah, we've seen a hundred chart before. It works the same way on a hundred chart. I'm a big fan of the number line personally because I think you can draw them easier. But if you want a little more proof, let's pick a number. Um, let's have Brian. Pick a number, please. You're not Brian. Pick any number. Well, if we have a hundred, do we have any other numbers after that? Yeah. Let's pick a number in between 1 and 100. So I have numbers before and after. 50? Can I jump it to 51 just to make it a little nicer? All right, so Brian's picked 51. My two end points, if I'm going to the nearest 10, are going to be the numbers that can be skip count 
by 10. You guys count by 10 with me, starting at 0. Ready? 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. These numbers, those are our ten, nearest 10 numbers, because we can skip count by 10. What is a 10 value that's close to 51? Which one of our 10s is close to 51, Damien? 50. 50 is close to 51. What's our other value that's close to 51? Eva? 60. 60. 50 would be on one side of 51, and 60 would be on the other side. Now we're going to figure out which one's closer. Now, it's kind of hard because 50 is all the way over here, but how many jumps do you think I need to take to get from 51 back to 50? Cord? One. It's going to be a weird jump just because of how the number chart is. But yeah, it just takes one jump. What about, Eva, to get from 51 all the way to 60? Jump, 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 how many numbers did I have? Nine. Nine. So which one is closer? Which one's a closer distance? What is it, Ella? Fifty. Yeah. Fifty, I only had to do one. It looks kind of weird because of how this chart's laid out. But fifty-one, to get all the way to sixty, I had to do nine. Let's do thirty-seven. Oh, no, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Alright, so let's start at 37. Find the number 37, and then we're going to round to the nearest 10. Figure out what point is closer. Here is 37. What are going to be my nearest 10 values? Remember, 10 values are the ones that we can easy, easy count by 10. Allie, what's going to be one of our 10 values? Um, at 37 would be 10. close to 10. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a 10 value. Remember, we skip counted by 10 to figure them out. 40 is going to be one of the 10 values. What's going to be the other one? It's kind of tricky because it's on another line. Kaylin? 30. 30. Very good. 30 is going to be in front of 37. 40 is going to be after. Which of these endpoints, 30 or 40, is going to be closer to 37? It's a little tricky because 30 is up there, but which one's going to be closer? Gabriella, which one's closer? Uh, closer to 37. Is it closer to 30 or closer to 40? 30. Is it? 40. Is it? Is it? Let's count. So if we're going from 37, we have to go backwards to 30. Count with me, Gabriella. One, two, three. Seven. Nine. Now let's count the distance from 37 to 40. Ready? Three. Which one has a smaller distance? 40. So which one's closer to 37? 40. Does that make sense? Yes. This is a little easier to see, but it's a little harder to draw. So I much prefer you guys using number one. It's the same thing. So this is how it looks on a hundred chart. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes? Okay. All right. So another trick for figuring out your endpoints. Go ahead and write 48 rounded to the nearest 10 and then leave some space underneath. Because I'm going to show you a trick so you can set up your number line. I've been giving your number line to you, but now I want you to be able to Make your own number line. You need to turn the page at any point of time to your notebook. Forty-eight round to the nearest ten is what you're writing. So I skip or I'm rounding to the nearest ten. I'm gonna underline the ten. So you get with me. 
I'm going to underline the 10 because that shows me what place value I need to look at. If I'm rounding to the nearest 10, I probably need to look in the tens place. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Which digit is in the tens place? Which digit? At the which digit? 40. 40, or the 4, is in the tens place. I know that whatever that first digit is, that's going to be my first endpoint. So I'm going to bring my 4 down. Now, Evo's right. That 4 doesn't just mean 4. It actually means 40. 40. The number line. And if I'm rounding to the nearest 10, how big does my number line need to go? Just 10 spaces. So if I started at 40 and I'm going 10 spaces, what's going to be my ending spot? If your eyes are turned around, it's going to be hard for you to answer my question. If I'm starting at 40 and I'm going 10 spaces, what number am I going to end up on? McKenna? 50. Look, you just set up your number line. That was easy. That was easy. Pat on the back. Good job, friend. You just set up your number line. Now you need to figure out where's 48 going to go. Is it going to go in the middle? Is it going to go close to 40? Is it going to go close to 50? Where's 48 going to go, Brian? 50. Close to 50? Yeah, it's going to be pretty close to 50. I'm going to put it about right here. Just like we've been doing at my small group, we're going to do two number jumps. Two number jumps. What's going to be the distance between 40 to 48? How many spaces did I go to get from 40 to 48? Your notebook should be open because you're writing. Gabriella, how many spaces did I go from 40 to 48? Put you got on your fingers. Eight. eight. So you went eight. Good strategy. Use the counting on strategy. I like it. Eight spaces. What about 48 to 50? How far did you go? Lucy? Two. Two. Which endpoint has the smaller distance? So many light bulbs. Bing, bing, bing. Galen, which endpoint has the smaller distance? To 50. 48 rounded to the nearest 10 is what? 50. Hey, look, you just rounded. Give yourself a high five. Good. All right, let's do one more. I want you to write the sentence. 71 rounded to the nearest 10 because we're going to do it together. Can I? All right, so we are rounding to the nearest 10. Underline the 10 so you know that that's the place you need to be at. Rounding to the nearest 10. Because I'm in the 10, I'm going to point to which place? 7. Which place is that? 7. Ten. 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 Which seven. happens to be a 7. Happens to be a 7. Now we know 7 and the 10 really mean 70. Seven. That's going to be first endpoint. Again, I look at my 10, because that tells me how big my number line needs to be. So if I'm starting at 70, and my number line needs to be 10 numbers long, what's going to be my end point? 10. Georgiana, what's going to be my end point? 80. 80. Look, you set up your number line. Awesome stuff. Alright, so we're at 70. One. Where's 71 going to go? 
Cheyenne, I put 71 on my board. Watch your hand. Remember, you can only put the marker on the board. Awesome. Try and put it right next to 70. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Two number jumps. Draw them. Two number jumps. Draw them. 71. Little baby jump to 70. And then a big jump to 80. Now I need to figure out the distance. How far did I go from 70 to 71? Zoe? One. One. I'm going to write it down here. What about 71 to 8? How far is that? that? From, uh, for the new teacher. Okay, thanks. Susie? It's going to be a distance of what? Nine. Nine. Which distance is closer? Which end point is closer? 71 is close to what? 70. 70. So 71 rounded to the nearest 10 is 70. Give yourself another high five. All right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to have you do this last one, but you are going to do it in a partner. No, you are not picking your partners off. Don't do that much. All right, so I lied. We're going to stay here. We're going to do one more. What's the first thing I need to do? Very first step. This is the important step. It's not important because we're only doing tens today, but when we start doing different rounding, it's going to be really important. The first thing that I need to do, Natalie. Well, yeah, 22 rounds to the nearest 10. Now what do I do? Well, before I do that, I need to figure out what my endpoints are going to be. So what do I need to start with, Courtney? Nope, not writing down anything. I'm going to underline something. I kind of what am I underlining? 22. No, I'm not underlining 22. Are you here? I'm underlining the 10 because it's really important that I know that I'm rounding to the nearest 10 value. Underline the 10 first. That tells me that I have to point my arrow to the digit in which place? The one? Am I pointing my arrow to the one place? No. No, because it says rounded to the nearest ten. ten. I'm going to point my arrow to that two in the tens place. Does anybody have a question or you just ready to move on? Okay. Which digit is in the tens place, Georgia? Two. Two, which makes that number not just two, but Three. actually 20. 20. That's my first end point. And 20 to 30. How did you know that it was 20 to 30? Because it says 10. To the and nearest 10. 10. So if I added 10 onto that, that would be 30. And 30 is the nearest 10. Beautiful. Beautiful. 20 to 30. Here's my number line. Where's 22 going to go? Natalie. I'll put 22 on my number line. You put a little tick mark. Put it pretty close to 20. Is it going to be right next to 20? No, no that's no, because you need 21 in there somewhere. Pretty close. Are we good? Two number jumps. 22 to 20. 22 all the way over to 30. Yes. Oh, it, it, you know it's 8 because 2, two minus minus. 2 minus 10 would equal 8. So my first distance, 20 to 22, down here is a distance of 2. Oh! Okay. Where did you go? It's still down there. I'm trying to move. Okay. It's a distance of 2, which means my other distance, 22 to 30, 
has to be what, Zoe? Eight. Which distance is closer for 22? Is it closer to the endpoint 20 or to the endpoint 30, Damien? It, it's, it's to 20 because 8 is much further than 20. Yes, it has a smaller distance. Beautiful. 22 rounded to the nearest 10 is 20. 20. Questions about this? Not so complicated, huh? I really want you to get in the habit, though, of underlining what it's telling you to round by. It's simple now, but when it gets all jumbled and we're rounding to hundreds and tens and different things, it's going to get more complicated. Okay? I'm going to round to thousands. Eventually.